Hello everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliot Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. And as you can hear from my voice, I am over my sore throat and cough, so yay, everything resumes to normal this week. They are all having a pullback or consolidation after Bitcoin broke to new all-time highs at the daily time frame by closing to new all-time highs on an upward session with push from volume we have an upward breakout but I did ex- did warn I didn't expect it but I did warn we could potentially see a pullback or consolidation in this area I thought it might happen before we broke to new all-time highs but it's happening after we broke to new all-time highs so there is some resistance in this area price has been able to sufficiently overcome it and remain above there the last completed week has a bearish upper wick the wick of this candlestick it's less than twice the length of the real body so this is not a shooting star candlestick pattern so there's no bearish reversal pattern at the weekly time frame. The upper wick though is bearish so unsurprisingly we're probably going to get a little pullback or consolidation to relieve short term extreme conditions at the daily time frame before the larger trend resumes. There is still an upward trend, there's a series of higher highs, there's a series of higher lows. In order for that trend to be broken we would need to see a new low now below the low of week beginning 21st of January at 38512.34 that would break the pattern of higher highs and higher lows telling us we've had potentially a trend change. If we do see continued downward movement for a deep pullback look for final support about 55,000. Volume has been pushing price higher. I'm suspicious of crypto compare data that sees wildly different volume from back here in May 2023 to this huge drop off here in week beginning 21st of May. Different data feeds do show some decline in volume but not as remarkable as crypto compare so I'm a bit suspicious about it. But what I am happy to see is this increase week on week for the last two green candlesticks. Volume is pushing price higher. The bulls have just started to return to the market. Volume's not as good as it used to be but it is pushing price higher and that's a feature of a bull market run not a bear market rally. I wouldn't actually expect volume to reach new all-time highs or even previous highs at this point in the bullish phase. I'm expecting for Bitcoin this is a big third wave. I can't share my Elliott Wave account with you. That's by subscription only on my website. If you want it you can get it but I can't share that for you for free here. But I am expecting a big third wave and with the point at which we are in the third wave I wouldn't be expecting huge volume at this stage but I should be expecting an increase in volume and that's exactly what we're getting. ADX tells us the upward trend is very extreme but it's not even at 60. ADX can get above 80. It can get above 90 when this trend market has a strong trend so it's not as extreme as it can get. RSI reached pretty deeply overbought, it hasn't been there overbought that deeply for long, it can reach deeply overbought relatively early on in a bullish run for this market and it can remain there for quite a while. Money flow is only just reaching into overbought so it's conditions are now overbought and extreme but not as overbought nor as extreme as they can get when this market has a bullish run. However, it would be good to see a bit of a pullback or consolidation here to relieve these extreme conditions and set up for the next bullish run for Bitcoin. ATR continues to show a steady increase even during the pullback. Volatility isn't leaving even during a pullback. This is actually really bullish. Technicals on the daily for Bitcoin. This candlestick here, I check the length of the lower wick in relation to the body. In order for it to be a hanging man pattern, the lower wick would have to be twice the length of the body and it's not. So there's no bearish reversal pattern at either the weekly or the daily time frames. That's a very important thing to note. We don't have an indication of a trend chain. For the shorter term, the series of higher highs and higher lows. This is the last higher low, the low for the session of 5th of March. So we would need to see a new low for the short term below 59.268.68 in order for short term to have an idea that we might have had a trend change. But because the trend is over a year long to the upside we would need that price point just above 38,000 I told you on the weekly we need that one breached in order to have confidence in a big trend change for Bitcoin we just don't have that yet look for support about 63.70 volume was pushing price higher up to the high and now for the short term volume is pushing price lower although the last completed candlestick for Saturday 15th that was a lot weaker but it's the weekend so it doesn't really mean much but for the short term a little bit of a push from volume pushing price lower tells us we're probably going to get to see a bit more of a pullback or consolidation here. ADX at the daily reached very extreme but not as extreme as it can get for this market it's now declining it's setting itself up for a new signal either way 
If this consolidation or pullback lasts this week, maybe into next, that will be enough to bring ADX back down out of extreme conditions below 45, setting Bitcoin up for a new trend in either direction. There is now short term at the daily time frame double bearish divergence. This suggests we're going to get a more time consuming consolidation or a deeper pullback to relieve these short term extreme conditions. It's not enough for the short term at this time frame to tell us there's a big trend change and the start of a new bear market for Bitcoin, what it's most likely telling us is this is a pause within an ongoing upward trend. And short-term double bearish divergence with price and money flow after money flow reached fairly deeply or very deeply overbought again tells us to expect a more time-consuming consolidation or a deeper pullback to relieve these short-term extreme conditions. ATR continues to show a strong increase even though price is pulling back range and volatility are continuing to be quite extreme. I can still share my Elliott Wave analysis of Ethereum with you for now, but in a few weeks we're going to be also providing this on a subscription basis on our website, Pure Elliott Wave. And when we do in a few weeks, when we launch it for the first 24 hours, we're going to have a grandfather rate. And that grandfather rate is going to be really good. It'll only be offered for 24 hours, will never ever be offered again. And as long as your subscription remains active, you'll keep that very low rate. So if if you want reliable, expert, consistent Elliott Wave analysis of Ethereum, you're going to be able to get it every week. Click on the link below to sign up to our list to get notified of when we launch this and when you can get hold of that grandfather rate. For now, it's still free. It's Elliott Wave is fractal. You have to fit the weekly into the monthly and the daily into the weekly. I don't do monthly apart from once every couple of months because otherwise it's just too repetitive. Today I'm going to look at the daily. This could be another second wave correction but for now I'm going to label potentially the middle of a third wave complete. Ethereum hasn't closed to new all-time highs but it is possible that the middle of a third wave is complete before it has because it's done that before. In previous huge bullish runs when I look at a full Elliott wave count of Ethereum at the daily chart level I can see potentially third waves having passed the middle portion before the new all-time high and then momentum and volatility continuing to increase after the all-time high as big third waves come to an end and it's the fifth waves to end third wave impulses one degree higher which are normally the longest strongest portion they cover the greatest amount of price distance but the least amount of time so they have the strongest volatility these are the vertical upward movements you see exhibited sometimes from cryptocurrencies so, so far for Ethereum, I'm expecting it's got a third wave at minor, intermediate, primary and cycle degree. So at least four degrees and within that we've got minute one, two and minute three needs to complete as an impulse. So it has to meet all of the core Elliott Wave rules for that structure. It may have minute one, two, three may be complete. Four may continue lower as a zigzag to find support at the log function of the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio at 3,201.62. Four may not move into wave one price territory below 2717.2, but if it does reach down to the lower edge of this channel, it may find support there. When four is complete, then five should complete higher, and I expect five to be longer than three and stronger than three. I expect five to be longer than three and shorter in terms of duration. So longer in price, shorter in duration. When I know where 4 ends and 5 begins, then I can calculate a target at 2 degrees, minuet and minute. And at that point, that's what I'll do. And then I'll start to calculate something I'll be happy to call a target. But I really do want us to focus on the bigger picture. I don't like calculating targets for these smaller ways because this is encouraging people to day trade. And if this Elliott wave count is correct and it's in a third wave at multiple degrees, volatility can increase without warning to the upside. We could have really explosive, surprising upside movement. For goodness sake, don't ever short a bull run, especially not in a crypto market. But if you're in and out all over the place, you run the risk of those incredible increases in volatility catching you by surprise and you're out of the market and you miss some of the greatest potential profits. I'm holding my Ethereum until I see the end of at least primary three and I might try and hold for the end of cycle three for Ethereum because it is the fifth wave to end primary three. So intermediate five to end primary three will be a really strong move and primary three to end cycle three will be even stronger and that's where you're going to get the most profit. And I don't want to be in and out and potentially not be in for that fifth wave. That's where I'm looking for my most profit. So there's no way I would be exiting at 
the ends of either of these third ways. Let's take a look at technicals. For Ethereum, there is a bearish reversal pattern on the daily. This is a hanging man, so unsurprising, we're getting some downward movement. I would look for support if we continue lower, about 3050. It could be that low because Ethereum did reach fairly extreme, so it could need a decent pullback to relieve those conditions. Volume is pushing price higher. Now, volume for the short term is pushing price lower, so expect more downward movement. I'm not going to con consider Saturday and Sunday. That's a week. Weekend, so volume's usually a bit lighter. Ethereum did reach reasonably extreme for the trend at the daily time frame. That's now out of extreme conditions. The trend is no longer indicated. The DX lines are starting to whip sore, so this is a normal look from ADX during a consolidation. RSI did reach deeply overbought exhibited no bearish divergence but now it's nicely in neutral territory so the pullback has relieved short-term extreme conditions. Money flow reached overbought and did exhibit double bearish divergence. It's now well in neutral territory so the pullback has relieved extreme conditions. It may continue lower or sideways to further relieve those conditions and set up for new signals and a new trend. ATR continues to increase even as price moves lower so volatility is not leaving the market. That suggests that maybe the pullback could be a little bit more brief than I'm expecting. I'm expecting a pullback or consolidation to continue throughout this week and maybe into next week but if I'm wrong look out for surprises to the upside. Again I'm changing my Elliott Wave count for XRP. This is one of the most difficult crypto markets with all of its overlapping and its tendency to form leading diagonals. I'm going to say the leading diagonal may have actually been complete at the high for the 11th of March with the strong upward spike and now a deeper pullback for a second Second wave correction may follow. Second wave corrections following first wave leading diagonals are commonly very deep, so the minimum expectation would be the log function of the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio at 0.5745. That may not be low enough. We might find another test of support in that 54.55 cent range. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 0.4883. Technicals at the daily for XRP, there is no bearish reversal candlestick pattern, so this looks like a pullback within an ongoing upward trend and not necessarily the start of a new bear market. Look for support now at 60 cents below that 54.55 cents. The 50 day moving average looks like it's crossing above the 200 day moving average. If this gets a little bit clearer tomorrow I'm going to label this a golden cross. That would be extremely bullish but it might quickly be reversed as well so if it's going to whip sort then I'm not going to label it either way because it's just cancelling each other out. Volume is strongly pushing price higher now overall as, vo as price declines volume declines there's not strength in this bearish movement no bearish reversal pattern no strength pushing price lower. ADX is declining it's just below 15 today it's setting itself up again for a strong signal. At this point with ADX declining it's telling us the market is most likely in a consolidation or a pullback. RSI reached overbought and exhibited single bearish divergence. Unsurprising, we get a, getting a pullback. It may continue. Money flow is neutral. Did not reach overbought. Did not reach extreme. Did not exhibit any bearish divergence. ATR continues to increase. A little bit of a decline today. It's not as strong an increase as we move down into the pullback, but still some increase in the pullback. Volatility has not exited the market. It continues to show an increase. So this is actually really bullish. That's it for me today with your update for these three. I hope everyone had a lovely weekend. I'm in Edinburgh today and I'm heading up toward the Highlands. I'm going in through the Highlands all the way up to Thurso for a little look at some of the really good surf Scotland has to offer. Although, look, let's be honest, I don't like cold water. I've got a 4-3 wetsuit but only under duress almost. And I'm only going to be paddling out in those freezing cold waters if those waves are really, 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 really good. Otherwise, I'll just have a wee look with a hot chocolate. And then I'm heading on down to uh, warmer climates and other parts of the world to get some decent surf.